So today I thought we'd take a look at this 15 volt power supply. This power supply goes with a mini dehumidifier. I have shown working on this mini dehumidifier in a previous video. Now this adapter has gone out. It is a 15 volt 4 amp rated power supply and we do see a hot spot here. Whether that's a cap or a transistor that got hot, we'll look into it and see maybe. This power supply does run hot. As we see here is a warm tip here on the power supply itself. That it should be below 60 C. That's still 140 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's very warm. So more than likely it's gonna be an electrolytic capacitor. With that kind of heat, it will definitely kill them. I got it plugged in now and no light on the output. That's usually a green LED there. Let's see, let's observe polarity plus and minus and I'm getting minus one volt, so negative one volt. That's a little bit odd. They must have had a reverse polarity on this plug from the factory actually because I don't think that would go negative no matter what kind of failure we have. Um, no AC ripple, just a low voltage output, so. We'll unplug it and let it bleed off for a minute. We'll take a look inside. Yeah, we see it dropping off now. I don't know if this is ultrasonically welded or they're just glued together, but let's just take a razor knife and first cut this label. We can lock this off a knife blade down. We're gonna score across the seam here. It actually don't feel like this one's welded. It might not be that difficult to get into. Just run around the edge here in case it's glued. I'm going to take these vice grip slip joint pliers and see if we can just crack it. Yep. Seems to be moving. Yep, it's opening up a little bit if you can see that. Yep, see if I can get a flat blade screwdriver in here and pop it open. Oh yeah, that was pretty easy actually. Some are ultrasonically welded and this one is not, so it come off pretty easy. And we do see that bulge cap right above where that hot spot was on the top of the case right there so that is on the output side so that is more than likely our problem since we were getting a low voltage output it probably just needs this capacitor to build that voltage on the output stage of this switch mode power supply just have some glue in the corners here i'm going to pry up on the corners and the board does come out like so looks like they siliconed it in so let's double check that this input capacitor is bleeding down. It should be. But this is a fairly large cap across this DC bus here on the input side. And yeah, less than 13 volts and dropping, so that's good. I'm going to continue on. Giving this a few more minutes to discharge. I am going to put this... ESR meter across the capacitor on the output side. And yeah, it says it's in circuit or leaky. Sorry, you probably couldn't see that. Let me do it again. Across here, it'll automatically analyze. And yeah, it's showing that it's either in circuit or leaky. And the ESR value is not good. So I have another 16 volt 2200 microfarad cap here. Let's see how it tests. It shows as good over 2000 microfarad and 0.13 ohm on ESR. So that's good. So let's go ahead and remove the old one right here. It's a little bit of thermal load here. So I'm just going to take some low melt solder. So this is solder that melts at low temperature and just going to mix it with this unleaded solder that's on this PCB. And when this mixes together, it'll be a lot easier to desolder. It'll stay liquefied for a few seconds. So this low melt solder is a good little trick here. Um, we'll just work it in. Make sure it's mixed in thoroughly. And then sometimes we can pull it right out. I think I had some glue 
or either the rubber pad under was stuck to the board. I'm going to touch the soldering iron to the pads again and liquefy. And there we go, it pulled right out. Let's go ahead and hook it up out of circuit and just see if it shows any differently because sometimes these capacitors do not test right in circuit, obviously. It's still showing leaky and showing 8.3 ohms. That is no good. Definitely a bad cap. Besides the obvious indicator of the little bulge cap, it's kind of textbook on these electrolytics when they start going bad. But one thing to note here is with this being a Chinese made cap with a capacitor of good name brand with the same rating, you run into this a lot. The capacitor is physically a lot larger and sometimes that does cause a problem. And here we are gonna be in a tight spot, but we definitely wanna put a good name brand cap in here, especially at that heat so it'll hold up better. And this cap is, it is definitely gonna have a lot better heat rating. I'm just going to take some solder wick here and wick up this low melt solder. We definitely want to get all that off the board. I'm going to add some Amtec 559 flux in here to help it wick even better. Low melt solder works great, but we want to get it all off the board before going any further. We don't want the final result to have a lower melting temperature solder mixed in. It's also brittle as well. Now we got all that off. It looks like negative is to the left or down. And yeah, that rubber pad was stuck to the board on this side. On that previous cap for sure. So negative goes to the left and in like so. Yep, that's flush and all the way in. I'm gonna bring over my flux again put a good bit of flux around these pads. Move our low temp solder out of the way so we don't get it mixed in. This is a good leaded rosin core solder I'm using here. It's gonna be the 6337 leaded. And there we go. That's got that new cap in. We need to clean up. Get some high percentage isopropyl alcohol on here and use a swab. Clean it up pretty good. Get some more alcohol. Get our brush. After brushing, we'll go over it one more time. I'm gonna get my ESR meter out of the way, which I should have done earlier before soldering. Let's start putting this back together. At least get the bottom part of this board covered since it does have high voltage on the board here. We do see an input fuse here that's kind of hidden. Looks like a fuse with a heat shrink over it in here on the input side. But a lot of silicone on the board here. I think I'm going to wait on the top so we can see what's going on here. Let's just plug it in and see if the light comes on. And there we go. Green light. Let's check this polarity. Yeah, and it is backwards from highest mark. That's just how it was from the factory. I got it minus and plus. But we're showing minus 15.18 volts. I like it. That must just be how it was here. We see it looks like this power supply from the original equipment manufacturer may have come with a barrel connector like so. But then they added on this little flat connector for this specific application. This fits so well back together, I believe we can simply super glue it. It does fit back nice. Closes the gap up completely, so just a little bit of super glue. I'm 
I'm going to bring my clamps over and I'll super glue it and I'll come put my clamps on kind of like so. And I can just let it sit there. Whether I'll show it on camera or not, I don't know, but that's what I'll do. So I have gone all around with super glue and filled up the cracks and I will just clamp this down. I try not to let any of the glue touch my workbench. And I'll set it like so. A little bit of cleanup. After a few hours of curing, I'm going to take the clamps off. Make sure everything did glue well. Yep, turned out pretty good. Let's take it to the dehumidifier and try it out. What do you think, Harvey Dog? Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Got this up here, got it plugged in. Well, that looks like a successful repair. Power supply seems to be working fine. I do want to mention in my previous video, I did share how these mini dehumidifiers have a limit switch problem. I did share a little bit about the diagram of how those two switches work, as well as taking some time to look into a better quality switch made by Omron that will be necessary because I ended up having to put these on mine to get it to keep running. But other than that, it's a very simple device. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have some links down in the video description of some tools and things I find helpful on my workbench. Any of those links that you do click on are affiliate links and to help support the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching. God bless, and Merry Christmas.